Hi and welcome to Two Pencil Bank in our, our company day, corporate day. My name is Marcus Almer and I'm an analyst here at the bank. Today I have with me the head of payment and access from Fingerprint Cards, Michel Roig. A warm welcome. Thank you very much, Marcus. Nice to be here today. So I'll leave the word to you. You have a, presenta a short presentation and then I'll come back with Q&A. Perfect. So, so we'll get started. You. Thank you. So fingerprint cards, payments and access. Uh, I want to give a first quick introduction to the company for those who don't know us. Uh, we've been around since 1997 and I think one of the greatest achievements we have done, which has enabled us to really scale the business, which is a benefit for new segments like payments and access, is our 1.5 billion sensors shipped. Uh, that's a great achievement for a Swedish company, so that's something we're very proud of. Uh, we work mainly in the fingerprint uh, recognition area, but we also do have other modalities, which is include touchless solutions with iris recognition. We are the largest uh, sensor provider to the door lock industry, which is part of our access segment. Uh, obviously, nine out of ten smartphone consumer products are launched with our sensors. Uh, more than 650 plus, actually 680 plus uh, models have been launched. And obviously something very dear to me is our payment card activities, where we have taken a clear lead. We've been part of roughly 24 plus pilots uh, for the last couple of years. And uh, actually, as late as yesterday, we announced that we are now in 10 commercial launches. I'll speak a little bit more about that later. Uh, roughly 250 people uh, in the company uh, with a very strong engineering background. Obviously, two thirds of the company is working in uh, R&D. Biometric card, what, what's that? That's, that's a typical card, same form factor, where we have added biometrics. Uh, you could say, okay, uh, is that hard? It's a plastic card. Well, actually, it's, it's very hard. <laughs> it took us several years to get here. It's, uh, we've obviously taken the uh, technology and the learnings from our mobile phone uh, business and poured it into this small form factor. It's less than a millimeter thin, so obviously the sensor has to be super slim. On top of that, the uh, per, uh, processing power that you have inside a card is 20x lower than a mobile phone. So you need to uh, optimize your algorithms to make sure that it fits. Uh, and on top of that, of course, you still need to run all the payment applets, MasterCard and Visa applets and so on. The benefit of the card, of course, is that you can now use your fingerprint tap and pay or dip and pay uh, for any transaction, any time, and always have a secure authenticated transaction. Uh, brings convenience without sacrificing security. And obviously consumers are now very uh, knowledged and very used to using biometrics from the mobile phone industry, so they actually see this as the next type of product where they would like to see biometrics. It's secure, it's all the data is stored on the card. It's an offline product, so once you have enrolled, your fingerprints are stored in the banking chips. They never leave the card. There's no database in the cloud where you match. Everything is done locally on the card. No battery powered either by the POS terminal or by the field when you do contactless. So obviously it needs to be very optimized in terms of functionality, power consumption, latency speed, uh, which has taken a few years to develop, but now we're there. 10 commercial launches, as I mentioned. We also uh, have uh, additional features. Uh, one thing that we're very proud of is that we have sort of machine learning, AI technology in our algorithm, which means that over time we adapt the, uh, the algorithm. So for example, in Sweden we have cold winters, humid summers, that impacts the fingerprint recognition. You will have sweaty or dry fingers. We have an algorithm that adapts over the seasonalities of the year and maintains the robustness and performance of the card. Uh, we launched some two and a half years ago commercially with, uh, with Thales. Uh, that was the first generation product from their side that was fully certified MasterCard and Visa. At that time, we had our first generation T-shaped module, uh, 1321, or called T1 as well. Uh, a little bit more than a year ago, we launched T2, which is what you can see here on the picture. Uh, what I think we are also very proud of is that we took a lot of learnings in, from the smart card ecosystem. We studied the smart card ecosystem actually several years to see how do we 
package our product for this industry versus mobile industry. And what was very clear is that we needed to have the sensor on what we call super 35 millimeter tape reel. Uh, this comes uh, from the industry. This is the way how the chips in the banking in industry are packaged to be able to enable fully automated production lines. So we put our sensor in the same so that the card manufacturers would not have to adapt their production line too much. It's easier to integrate now. We have two side by side, uh, smaller, which means uh, more footprint on, on the package, but also more footprint on the card, uh, fully compliant with the MasterCard's latest specifications, uh, which we already certified or pre-certified, meaning that all card manufacturers that use our technology can skip the biometric testing when they go for MasterCard certification and can focus on the card level certification that they, that they always have to do. If we look at the market a bit then, uh, I mentioned 24 pilots, 10 launches. You can see here on the slide the different uh, customers that we have piloted with and also the customers that we have launched with, end customer that is, uh, as we don't sell direct to the banks. Uh, what I find very interesting with this slide on top of big banks like BNP, Credit Agricole, BBVA, is a little bit of a hot spot happening now in, in what we call the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa. Uh, we see some interest in Middle East where we've had one launch in, in Jordan. I think we'll see more launches in that area. But what is very interesting is the uptake in the Morocco market. Uh, you could argue, okay, how significant is Morocco for this payment industry? But what I want to point out is, first of all, you have a spillover effect from the, from the French market, of course. Uh, so big banks that are in France are also in, in Morocco. There's this uh, sort of sisterhood. Uh, but in Morocco, it wasn't just one launch. Actually, when the first launch happened, we, we knew that the pipeline was coming with all major banks. Today, we have four banks launched in Morocco. It's showing that it's really the first market where they go cross banks. We expect this, of course, to happen in other markets. We think France uh, is coming. We, we know that more banks will launch in France as well. But this is a testament that one bank goes, everybody wants to have the offering, and they really go, go forward. Uh, interesting as well with, with the, the Morocco market is that they've decided, of course, as many banks, to start in the premium segment. Uh, if you look at BNP, they have what we call an opt-in. You, you sign up and you pay a little bit extra from your normal cost for getting a biometric card. Whereas in Morocco, several of the banks have decided my premium card is now a biometric card. So when you sign up or, or get a premium card, it will be biometric. That's really the first we've seen, which is, I think it's going to be a game changer because we want to get beyond sort of the opt-in, the sort of automatic distribution as with contactless. So yesterday we had announced two additional launches in Morocco. They were in the previous slide. That was Societe Generale in Morocco and uh, Bank of Africa, BMC. Uh, we do expect Societe Generale in France to also at some point launch. Uh, we'll come to that later, later on. Uh, we're still expecting timing allows, and of course we cannot control the banking uh, launches, but from what we see, uh, there could likely be two or three more launches imminently. It could still be this year, or it slips in early next year, but we see more launches coming. And we've seen, of course, uh, Idemia launching as well, which I think is very good for the industry. We need more and more uh, banks launching with more and more suppliers. Uh, feedback from those that are using the cards in the different pilots and launches, as far as we're able to get it, is very positive. Consumers who have the card and have enrolled uh, correctly and are using the card and start using the card, continue to use the card and have very good performance. Actually, very little failure rate, so very, very good performance, stable performance, which will be key for this type of market. As I mentioned, uh, the banks in Morocco have taken away this opt-in, so if you're a premium customer, you will get the biometric card. Looking a little bit about the consumer appetite, I mentioned that we've done some surveys and after the smartphone and the PC, we see that cards is the form factor where consumers say, well, why is there not biometric in cards? It makes absolute sense. So we did some surveys where we looked at, okay, what does it mean for the appetite of actually getting it or switching bank if your bank doesn't offer it? And we could see that actually there's quite a high appetite. 50% said, yes, I would switch bank if my 
bank doesn't offer it and a competing bank offered it. And 17, maybe, which is sort of also there, right? And only 31 said, no, I would not switch. Looking at the different demographics, you can see that it varies a bit depending on income, depending on age and gender. What I think is interesting to look at is, is the age, uh, which is really from millennial up to sort of mature. Maybe older people have a little bit more difficulties with new technology, but it shows that there's a very strong uh, 65 plus sort of in average here for the, for the demographic, which I think is, is key for this market. Also, willingness to pay is very high. So I believe for this really to become more and more mass, there should not be a differentiator. It should have be sort of just deploy it from a bank perspective. But actually, banks can differentiate and can make additional revenues because people are willing to pay extra. An average, three, three euro per month. In BNP, they charge two euros, so it's fitting pretty well. Uh, some of the other banks that are charging are also in that range, 1.5 to 2 dollars, euros, uh, and you can see sort of the difference. Interestingly enough, if you take the two lower hand here, uh, meaning that 50% are willing to pay at least one euro, right? Some are even pay, willing to pay more. Uh, so, very strong appetite. A little bit about uh, how we work with the customer base and the partners. I'm going to speed up here a little bit, but we obviously work with the big tier one card manufacturers. We work with the chip ven chipset vendors to enable sort of what we call a plug and play turnkey solution that we do to be able to address tier two card manufacturers, the smaller card manufacturers that don't have that much R&D and needs more of a plug and play solution. Obviously, working with Visa, MasterCard and the inlay providers in the ecosystem. Uh, I'm proud to announce today we made a PM with Infineon, which is the largest chipset manufacturer in the payment ecosystem. Uh, this is very disruptive. Uh, we'll probably talk more about this at a later stage, but this basically means we have integrated sensor secure element, one package into one module. We're using inductive coupling to connect it to the car, it means no wires inside the car, less yield loss, higher throughput in production, lower, or lower overall cost, fully integrated, as I mentioned, with their chip OS from Infineon. Uh, it's taking a, a few years to get here, and we will be launching this together officially by the start of next week at Trustec. Of course, that's pre-series. Commercial launch is later, uh, end of next year. And I think with that, we go to questions. <coughs> right. Uh, so maybe we will start with you know, a question that I get all the time in, in this and the yes. thought that a discussion, a topic that comes up over and over and over, and that's mobile payments. So you have you have the you have the iPhone and and Apple Pay and Google Pay and, and etc. Samsung Pay. Yes. Uh, and I'm personally using Apple Pay the most. So where do you fit into all this? And and we know that parts of the world the the mobile world is growing very rapidly. Maybe less so in Europe. But if you can just discuss that topic and where you are in that Ye Yes, absolutely. First of all, I'd like to point out that we are a biometric company supplying sensors for any type of consumer device. Mm -hmm. So obviously, when you use different pay solutions and authenticated biometrics, there's a very high likelihood that you're using our sensors. So we are in mobile payments using biometrics. Consumers are used now, as yourself, to pay mm -hmm. either with Face ID or, or pressing the finger. And if you think about when you do that, you authenticate the transaction and there's no pin even above the transaction cap that exists today yeah. in contactless. So that sort of user behavior people are used to. And it's actually logical that you get that same user behavior on any device. And phones is one device, cards is another device, which is still very much used, will be around for many, many, many years. So obviously we want to be in that device, we want to be in the phone device, we want to be in watches, in wearables, anywhere where you want to authenticate a transaction with biometrics, we want to offer solutions. Card is a big volume market, that's mm -hmm. why we decided to go for it. We believe in both, combined, side by side. And, and if, if we continue on that track and kind of where, where we're going. So this is, I think, I mean, you think this will be the next generation of payment cards. And if you listen to Thales or Idemia, they're talking the same kind of language. Yes. Uh, if, we if we talk about the last, last version of the cards or the last 
So it's a level, it is a contactless. Yes. So we went from chip and pin to contactless. Uh, talk a little bit about that journey and, and the timing of it, the yes. speed of it, and what conclusions can be drawn from that on this. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I mean, I think I'm the first to say that it has taken longer than even I expected. Being mm -hmm. in the ecosystem, of course, talking to banks, talking to the ecosystem, we've realized that this is a totally different ecosystem than mobile phone, where you have a very short lifetime, one phone, it launches, the next follows. This is a different type of product. It's not your own device. You're licensing this actually from the bank. And the banking industry is, is, is a bit of a conservative market, if, if I can say so. However, we see this following the trends of contactless. I think and believe, and we all do, that this will go slightly faster than contactless. Contactless mm -hmm. took around 11 years to reach 1 billion cards. And that was because you had the infrastructure rollout at the same time. This time you don't have the infrastructure rollout, but you have a slightly higher cost burden that we need to work with as, as an yeah. ecosystem. As long as we get that uh, with Murphy's Law, Moore's Law down, which we will, uh, we, we will get there. Uh, and we've just really started. Two years ago were the first launches. Now we're at mm -hmm. 10. We see this multiplying. Uh, we expect it to be faster than contactless. But it will follow sort of the same trends. Okay, and, and if, I, if I pick up on one thing you said there about, you know, it's taking a bit longer than expected to, yeah. to kind of get started. But if you say that now you have started, are you on track now? I mean, does it develop in line with your thinking now or is it still a bit slow? I think what is most important now is to get more banks. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I mean, volumes is critical, it is important, but right now the focus for me and my team is really to get more launches. Mm -hmm. More banks, they don't have to be significant in volume from that perspective, but the more banks we have, the volumes will come. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to point out one thing that has been the key as well for this, taking a little bit, sort of being a little bit more shaky er, early days in terms of rollouts, has been uh, that this also requires a different onboarding. You need to enroll yourself on the card, which wasn't the case with chip and pin and contactless, right? So that's also one thing that is needed to be streamlined more for this to really take off. Mm -hmm. uh, and and if, we, if we talk about the mass market and we kind of tier them, because right now it's, it's a premium product. Yes. So if we kind of tier the market into different ones, we talk about a billion cards, for instance, but it'll be easier, I would assume, to get to kind of penetrate the premium market than the mass market. How big is the premium market? So what are we talking, what kind of numbers are we talking about? You were talking about the billion cards. Yeah, you, you, can, you can slice it a bit different, but I'll uh -huh. give you some numbers to uh -huh. give you perspective. I mean, there's a premium and there's a premium premium. I mean, top premium is typically what you see today with metal cards. That's maybe 50 to 100 million cards. Uh -huh. If you look at premium, or if you would say that credit cards is considered a premium, uh -huh. because there's also services and typically higher costs associated with having a credit card. That is roughly one third of the total cards. So if you look at ABI and things like that, they talk about 3.5 billion cards issued per year that are smart cards. Roughly one billion of that is credit cards. Okay. So that's a pretty big sort of premium segment. If you say that, okay, not all credit cards are really premium, you take some, some type of a, a sub-segment, you should say that at least 10 to 15% of the total market is a premium market, which means 300, 350 million cards uh, per year. Yeah. Okay, okay. And, and if we were to go beyond that, uh, what do you think is needed? So if I take a contactless card now, cost one to three dollars, you know, that, yes. that kind of money. And this is a factor of X yes. at, at the moment. Yeah, cost is coming down. Yes. But what do you think is kind of the breaking level for this to really hit? So today, as you said, one to three depends on volumes, that depends uh -huh. on now there's sustainability coming, prices are going up a little bit again. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you look at when it was launched, actually the contactless was four to eight X of the chip and pin. The chip and pin was eight X of the MagStripe card. So obviously the industry has gone through this before. I think for this to become true mass market, you need to be in sort of the two to three X range for that deployment to happen, which is somewhere between five to eight dollars for a card. Okay, okay. And with this new, you, you were talking a little bit about the Secura Bio that you're launching together yes. with Infineon. Uh, and is this a game changer? I mean, are we moving, are we really moving in terms of cost of the card with this? 
Yes, I mean, the, the main thing with the, the integration and collaboration with Infineon is that, first of all, we are integrating two chips in one package. Mm -hmm. So the secure element and the sensor, we're putting in one package and making one module out of that. On top of that, that's fully integrated with the chip OS, fully integrated with biometric algorithms, one package. The key differentiator with that solution is that it's built on what we call inductive coupling technology, uh, something that the dual interface, the contactless market is using very much today, meaning that there's no connections into the card, meaning that you don't have points that can break in production, meaning that you can get a much, much higher yield in production. And that, of course, means lower cost. So yes, we, we think this is unique, unique solution. Okay. And if we talk about opt-in and opt-out, you were talking about that a little bit. You now have a Moroccan bank who is, who is not charging their customers, their premium customers for it, who is sending out cars automatically with, with the sensor. Is this a trend or is it a one-off? I mean, what, what kind of discussions are you having with Good with question. It's a bit mixed. We have mm -hmm. been pushing that quite hard, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're anyway in the premium, the differentiation on cost is limited because you have a pretty high entry fee to, to be part of that premium segment. Why don't just go automatic? Uh, some banks are still trying sort of t charging, uh, but I think in the last four to five to six months as the Moroccan banks have launched and we have pushed this message, we're seeing more and more of a trend that that makes sense. And I think it's the way it happened in the past. Contactless cards in Sweden was available earlier in other countries, but as your expiry date came to an end, you would then get contactless. And that's really what we want to get to. Yeah, okay, okay. And you mostly work with Thales. You work with all of them, ID me and I and um, G and D and, and all of the second tier as well. But but Thales is the biggest one. Uh, and and Idemia mainly work with your key competitor, uh, Edex. And it seems to me like Edex is ramping up. No, no, prob uh, that Idemia is, is kind of accelerating. So are you thinking the same or seeing the same? And, and how is Thales in this? And how are they reacting to this? And is it market which is driving this? Or, or are they pushing? And what is, again, how is Talis acting in all this? If you look at what has been publicly announced, which uh -huh. is what I can talk about, uh -huh. you have to go back to 2020 when Talis announced the card certified MasterCard and Visa. Uh -huh. That's the reason we have 10 launches today. I mean, some were with GND as well, but mainly all the launches were with Talis. So they had that two year advance because they had a certified product. Idemia certified their new generation because the first generation wasn't fully certified and they really wanted to go for that next generation card. That was certified more or less a year ago. Mm -hmm. So obviously what we're seeing now from Idemia is what Atalis did two years ago. So we should see them ramping up, getting more launches. But of course, now Atalis is established, Idemia is coming. Now we're getting that sort of competition that the market needs. So for sure, uh, in our dialogue with Atalis, this is something that they welcome but also makes them stand more on their toes and, and be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. So healthy competition. Healthy what competition, you would call yes. It. And if we talk about tier two and tier three, because we have, I mean, in all of these parts of the, so of the value chain, we have a couple of big ones and then you have kind of a tail. How important is this tail to kind of get this moving? Because you see a few larger banks, but you have, for instance, in Sweden, you have Rocker, but you have none of the big banks. Yes. So how important is this tail? I think the, the tail is very important. If, if we take a, a market like Sweden, for example, we have a very strong player in tier to every that is doing the personalization for most banks. IDEMA is also present, for sure. And tier to works with not only Thales and GND, but they also work with tier twos like TAG and others. So obviously, it, it's, it is, if you look at the global sphere, you have the big three guys that more or less cover 75% of market. So they will be globally. But there can be banks or regions where the tier twos are more regional, more local, more present, are able to take business that maybe the big guys are not so interested in. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think the tier two, tier three is needed to create this healthy competition, but also because they are on the AVL of certain banks and the big guys are not. So if we want this to be mass deployed, we need all the players in the ecosystem to be on board. And we're really seeing that happening now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. for me, it's key. I think actually our time is up. 
So I could go on forever, but, but thank you very much for coming here and talk to us. Looking forward very much to see the next steps. And I think acceleration is a good word to describe what's going on right now. Perfect. And thanks for being here. I appreciate it a lot. And we'll be back. Thank you for listening. Thank you.